even in Frederick Douglass's early life. He always took on great responsibility. There was always huge expectations of him. As a preteen, he was responsible of keeping up the upkeep for the plantation that he lived on. This man was a leader all his life. At the age of 15, he got his first job while still being enslaved. He purchased a book named The Columbian Orator, which he read constantly. Frederick Douglass was such a dope individual. He had his own newspaper. He was even a presidential advisor. And he was also nominated to be vice president. But enough about that. I'll be talking about the legacy of Frederick Douglass in another video at another time. In this video, I actually want to talk about a fist fight that he had. A fist fight that he called the turning point in his career as a slave. So one day, Frederick Douglass was being defiant. His slave over, Mr. Covey. Mr. Covey was known as a man who would break slaves. He had a very serious reputation. If you were a slave owner and you had slaves that had problems following the rules and following your directives, you would send your slaves to a man like Mr. Covey. You would hire Mr. Covey to break your slaves to teach your slaves some discipline. So Mr. Covey was that type of guy. So one day, Frederick Douglass was pretty fatigued. And basically, he was just tired of his shit. So Mr. Covey lashed out at him. And Frederick Douglass whooped his ass. This beatdown lasted for about two hours. Mr. Covey punk ass took off running. Frederick Douglass chased him through the forest. After the beatdown, Mr. Covey still wanted to protect his reputation. Now such an act like this will be death for a slave. But Mr. Covey never mentioned it. And from that day forward, Frederick Douglass was never beat again. In Frederick Douglass' biography, He quotes, The battle with Mr. Covey was the turning point in my career as a slave. It rekindled the few expiring embers of freedom and revived within me a sense of my own manhood. It recalled the departed self-confidence and inspired me again with a determination to be free. The gratification afforded by the triumph was a full compensation 
for whatever else might follow, even death itself. He can only understand the deep satisfaction which I experienced, who has himself repelled by force the bloody arm of slavery. I felt as I never felt before. It was a glorious resurrection from the tomb of slavery to the heaven of freedom. My lone crushed spirit rose cowardice, departed, bold defiance took its place, and now I resolved that however long I might remain as a slave. The day had passed forever when I come to be a slave, in fact, I did not hesitate to let it be known of me that the white man who expected to succeed in whipping me must also succeed in killing me. Frederick Douglass said, not today, motherfucker. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give me the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Another video is on its way. Stop having so much fun! <laughs> hey, Master, won't you do me a favor and master these nuts in your mouth, nigga? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Now, that's enough. I've had it. Y'all gonna get a timeout. Everybody is in timeout right now. Man, you ever notice how white people sound when they get mad? <laughs> I've had it. Everyone's getting a timeout. <laughs> Hey, Master, Deander sent a message for you. I don't know anyone named Deander. Deander who? Oh. Deander my dick, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have put up with this for long enough. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Get to work now. Now, I'm, I'm sorry I had to speak at you so sternly, but you brought it on yourself. Slave masters have feelings too. I just don't understand. I try so hard.